Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazad of Chess Channel and welcome to an epic gameplay by the latest version of Stockfish, the Palfer Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine Berserk in an amazing advanced variation of the Karokan Defense. And this game I promise you, you really really like because I think you, you see one of the coolest endgame techniques performed by Stockfish 16. The king in one particular moment will be all over the place. In my opinion, really one of the most epic endgames that I've seen in my life. Put your seatbelts on and enjoy again in the spectacular gameplay by Stockfish 16. So, with the white pieces, the fish open with the move e4. Berserk's response was c6, the Karokan. d4, d5, e5, the advanced variation, of course. You have to now play bishop to f5 in order to keep your bishop outside of the pawn chain. You don't want, to, of course, to play it first of all, the move e6. So, here we have knight to d2, uh, e6 by um, um, the Berserk engine. Knight to b3, controlling the c5 square because in one moment, uh, black will eventually try to break and enter with the move c5 so that's why at least for a while stockfish is preventing this idea by black we have knight to d7 preparing c5 knight to f3 and now after bishop to e4 bishop to e2 now comes this normal idea here by the berserk chess engine we have c3 fixing the structure and after c takes d and c takes d the position is about equal i would say this is playable for both sides as i said uh, the light square bishop of blacks is out this bishop has a good activity what you are trying to do is search for improvement for the knight the knight on g8 has i think a tough time to get back into the game but uh, my stockfish engine also at home invalidates this position as equal really really good also so far strategic play by the berserk chess engine we have bishop to b4 bishop to d2 queen to b6 which is a certain theoretical novelty uh, this move has not been played so far in chess history bishop takes d2 has been played in top gm level so here uh, the berserk engine could try to continue uh, the pressure here on the queen side we have rook to c1 knight to e7 finally by uh, berserk and now after bishop to b4 queen to b4 and queen to d2 uh here um we have i think the first really critical moment of the game here you have to make a decision you could maybe take um here um the the queen on d2 but actually this would be an inaccurate move here by by black uh, berserk didn't play this but i wanted to show how powerful also uh, this attack can be because after something like knight takes d2 you don't have so many good squares for your bishop you have to play something like look at this bishop to f5 now we can chase away the bishop for instance with the move g4 in one moment we can lock it also even if you try here to play bishop to g6 then um, here h4 you have to create some breathing spaces h5 bishop to h7 and now knight to a5 is very very dangerous here to handle uh, for the berserk chess engine that's why it's very important here in this position to keep the queen on on the board in order to control also uh, this powerful knight that could jump here on the square a5 so that's why queen to b6 by the berserk chess engine we have now knight to g5 an attacking move here by stockfish the problem again here for uh, black is that you cannot pick up the pawn on g2 because after rook to g1 you could maybe try also counter play here with h6 but now we sack the knight but we get the piece back and uh, black is facing then several likes were problems in the position i think this wouldn't be again a good continuation here for black so that's why after move knight to g5 the berserk chess engine retreated to f5 knight to c5 stockfish creates now i think the first surprising move I, th I would say because after knight to c5 d takes c5 the pawn structure is not symmetrical anymore uh, in the previous position we had really a firm structure in the center of the board now stockfish creates again an unbalanced position creates at least this three versus two situation uh, here on the queen side so create here a certain pawn majority is trying to at least attack one side of the board we have queen to c7 uh, f4 by the fish king side casting knight to f3 uh, trying to get this knight again on a beautiful square here on the square d4 we have a bishop to e4 casting by stockfish and now b6 and now i think the real fun starts now from this point on i think stockfish plays is really one of the most incredible chess games that i've seen in my life stockfish first of all plays now the move c6 and uh, in the beginning i couldn't understand why anyone would um, push the pawn like this this become this pawn is obviously now becoming a weakness here this pawn will be attacked and afterwards although uh this pawn uh, is supported of course by the rook but so far look at this the knight is already attacking uh, the queen is already attacking one of these rooks could be included of course into the attack um, in order to cra capture the pawn c6 but stockfish really beautiful idea here is that stockfish is trying to paralyze the whole queen side by pushing this pawn on c6 so forcing here black to basically battle for this 
annoying pawn here on c6 and meanwhile to attack here the king side now berserk had to take here uh, first of all the bishop on f3 uh the knight on f3 with the bishop because if you would not have do that if, done that if you play something like b5 then knight to d4 is again the tricky idea that was Stockfish's plan to uh, keep the pressure here around the score c6. So that's why Berserk had to take out now the knight. And after rook to f3 uh, in a6, here Berserk is trying to play now, of course, b5, rook to b8, rook to b6, and finally capture the pawn. But Stockfish continues, of course, with rook from f to c3. He is simply attack, uh, protecting now the pawn further. And the issue a little bit here for black is that black so far has to create the blockade here uh, with the queen. The better piece in order to create some kind of a defensive setup would be the knight. But you don't have this maneuver maybe to play knight to d5 and then to fix the, f the structure with the move knight to c7. If that would be possible for black, I think black would have a solid game, but not with the queen. We should not block out pawns with the queen. You see now how the queen is simply paralyzed uh, by Stockfish attack here. St here Berserk tries b5. Stockfish uses now the dark square problems all over the board we have rook from a to b8 and now stockfish simply attacks the king side really really wild stuff h4 rook to b uh, rook to b6 h5 rook from f to b8 and now king to h2 because everything is neutralized here everything is paralyzed and everything is coordinated uh, towards the queen side here stockfish says i have even time to attack the position with my king really really beautiful beautiful technique here by stockfish after move g6 that uh, the berserk chess engine plays stockfish plays a very important move bishop to d3 in the beginning it seems so that this move is not doing so much but you'll see why it was so important now to play the move bishop to d3 it's of course an improvement of the minor piece but this uh, move is of course targeting here the h7 square really really tricky tricky also here idea by stockfish rook to c8 king to b4 we have uh king to g7 you could of course here take um with rook to c6 but then after rook to c6 again you have to take out with the knight the queen will come into the game maybe this was also one way to go maybe you can do it like this but queen to d6 in my opinion seems really, really already already very dangerous uh, here against black so after queen to b4 we have king to g7 now comes again queen to d6 this is now the main attacking motif by stockfish you can of, of course take here uh, queen takes d6 um, e takes d6 knight to c6 but then d7 is rolling you have to step back and now we pick up the piece again i think the game is over here for black so that's why from queen to d6 uh berserk repeated simply moves didn't have anything to do here because the position is so paralyzed here on this side of the board after king to f8 we have king to g3 king to g7 king to f2 and now finally berserk took stockfish waited for this moment that berserk takes and now stockfish plays a very very interesting move queen takes c7 after rook to c7 again the pieces are paralyzed again the pieces are um too too we're playing with too much dependency you cannot of course move the knight you cannot of course move the rook so this all all of the structure is simply paralyzed you cannot also move move this rook so very very tricky idea and stockfish is saying now i will simply continue to attack here the position but with my own king really really crazy look at this after king to g3 <clears throat> rook to c8 played by berserk we have the rook to c5 getting of course even the rook on a more active square we have now the move f6 and now comes a brilliant move that I think uh, caused here too much damage in in, in um, Black's position. Maybe just for fun, you can pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for White. What would you do now in this particular position? It's a really, really cool move. Okay, Stockfish played here a beautiful H6. This is a beautiful, spectacular move. Look at this. If you take king takes h6 then you're running into a checkmate that's that's the beauty about this move bishop to d3 because after a um, e takes f6 you don't have any more escape uh, um, escape scores for the king you have to play maybe something like g5 but now look at this uh this uh, rook is coming into the game this bishop is covering this square this pawn is covering this square so game over here for black very, very spectacular move h6 black has to step back now and now stockfish again includes the bishop into in, in, in a different way into the game we have now uh here king to e7 bishop to g4 f5 provocative move here by stockfish this move bishop to g4 which creates now a clear path for the king really really beautiful as we mentioned before this whole queen side is paralyzed and stockfish creates now 
a beautiful path for the king and it's basically go going for this weak h7 pawn i haven't seen anything like this before we have seen many many great king activities in chess history but this is really spectacular how stockfish prepared uh, all of this uh, look at this the king is of course uh, going towards now the, uh, towards the queen side but stockfish uses now this moment plays now king to h4 rook to a8 even if you play something like knight to e7 here then after a couple of trades of pieces the um uh, the king is coming into the game and you don't have time uh, to play king to e7 in order to control the f6 square because you get rook to c7 and again you lose this pawn on h7 this was really really cool here by stockfish so that's why uh, here rook to a8 now stockfish gets the king closer we have rook to a7 king to f6 nothing can be done and as i said the position on the queen side is really paralyzed knight to e7 stockfish gets now the king into the game we have king to e8 and stockfish simply grab the pawn really really beautiful beautiful technique now this pawn is weak this knight is again paralyzed it cannot move of course you could maybe try after king to d8 something like king to h7 uh, knight, uh, knight to c8 but then you simply lose this pawn so it's again not working so after king to g7 as we said king to h7 king to f7 and now stockfish uh, gets the rook into the game really, really a beautiful move we have now the move a5 here if you take of course uh, here um, and then uh, the rook is coming into the game and uh, again we'll simply get the king out of this mess we'll simply push the pawn further this pawn is then simply unstoppable uh, here for black so here in the game now uh, after rook to c8 uh, we have a5 stockfish gets again this other rook into the game we have rook to b7 rook takes b7 rook takes b7 rook to d8 here by stockfish rook to c7 a4 we have knight to, um, uh, knight to c6 and after rook to g8 now the knight is not covering anymore this course stockfish played rook to g8 and in this particular position the berserk chess engine resigned really really beautiful technique here in the end because even if you step back with your knight then this one is coming into the game you lose eventually this pawn this pawn is then rolling uh, this pawn is also weak so too much pressure on all uh, on both sides on the board so poof great great really it's a different i think game that we used to see by stallfish many times we see this brutal tactics and sequences i loved uh this game because it's so positional but with so many positional brilliances this is really incredible how stallfish used the spaces on the king side in my opinion as i said one of the best chess games that i've seen by stockfish in this different different playing style so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it enjoyed it a lot if you want to see more beautiful strategic but also beautiful tactical games here on my youtube chess channel check out our common chess games play by computers here's the link of our playlist and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more um, see you soon with some more videos uh, what do we see at the end